Hi, this is your girl LaQuinta, and thank you for joining me for another awesome conversation. Today, we're going to be talking about something that I am passionate about, and that is the elevation of black girls in an urban school setting. So growing up as a young black girl and attending a public school, I was oftentimes timid and lacked the confidence that I needed to reach my highest potential. And in many situations, I felt like I wanted to get up out of my chair and scream, I am here, don't you see me? I wanted to be seen and ultimately I wanted to be heard. I just wanted to feel like I belonged. So as an educator, I reflect on how this and so many black girls may be experiencing the feeling of not belonging, the feeling of not being valued, or the feeling of just needing to be heard. And the reality is black girls are oftentimes treated unfairly because of their race and gender. They are unfairly placed into categories of being rude and loud when this is far from the truth. I believe that black girls are not being afforded a space where they can share their concerns without being judged. So why not create a safe space for black girls to be able to talk about their shared experiences with other black girls? Why not offer a safe space that would encourage self-awareness and promote a sense of belonging? So I wanted to look at the implementation of affinity groups. How can affinity groups address all of these concerns? So race and gender stereotypes play out in schools and contribute to the mistreatment of black and brown girls. These stereotypes can have a negative impact on the development of black girls' identity and their overall academic success in school. And unfortunately, black and brown girls are negatively categorized before they even have the opportunity to succeed. So in the past, the focus has been primarily on black boys in regards to racial disparities. However, recent studies prove that the need to address racial disparities involving black and brown girls must be taken with a sense of urgency and resolve. So we have black feminist scholars, scholars such as Kimberly Crenshaw, who work has been critical in studying how black women and girls suffer from different forms of inequality and disadvantages that is compounded due to their race and gender. Most of Crenshaw's work is focused on critical race theory. So today we are going to be talking about critical race feminism, which is a branch of critical race theory. So critical race feminism is guided by the understandings black women's historical experiences with race, gender, and class. Critical race feminism has become a useful tool in examining black girls' experiences and identity development in places such as schools. Critical race feminism allows black girl voices to be heard and their stories to be told in a white dominated society. So did you know that there's also research about the importance of critical conversation spaces? Research has confirmed that critical conversation spaces can be used to empower marginalized students. In the American Educational Research Journal, an article titled The Impossibility of Being Perfect and White Black Girls' Racialized Gender in School Experiences explains that critical conversation spaces can allow black girls to see their experiences do not exist in isolation and that their voices are valid and valued. So, affinity groups can serve as a safe space for black girls to have these critical conversations about shared experiences, and this environment supports the uplifting of black girls who are oftentimes discriminated against because of their race and gender. The implementation of affinity groups can take place in any organization or school. So for this particular study, I decided to focus my research on an urban school setting. It was important for me to work in an urban school setting because oftentimes, an urban school setting comes with specific challenges, particularly in the areas of high student, um, high student lack of attendance, classroom discipline, student pregnancy, and the list goes on and on. So the participants of this study were all in eighth grade and were African-American females. Their GPA ranges from a 2.0 to a 4.0. All participants were willingly um, to meet without hesitation to be a part of this study. And due to COVID, we met via Zoom weekly. The impact of the implementation of the affinity group had very promising results. The participants explored open-ended questions that range from self-awareness, identity, race, um, sense of belonging, and validation. And I noticed 
that the weekly reflections promoted a sense of empowerment and sisterhood. Participants laughed and praised each other. Participants collaborated on what they think that needed to be done to help other black girls who may oftentimes feel like they don't belong. In fact, the last day of the meeting, the girls asked if the fitness group could continue. So even to this day, I meet with the girls once a week to talk about things that interest them. So as part of their exit survey, students had to answer this question. Do you think affinity groups can be essential in black and brown girls' sense of belonging? One of the responses was, yes, 100%. This group makes us feel more heard, like someone actually cares. Another participant said, yes, because it makes you feel better about yourself and give you more self-confidence involving your own race. I really enjoyed this opportunity. There is such a great need to make sure that black and brown girls are protected and valued. There are so many challenges that they can face by being black and being a girl. It is critical for, being, for black girls to be given a platform where their voices can be heard without judgment. Their stories should be placed at the center of the conversation and not at the margins. This study was conducted during a difficult time. Yes, COVID has impacted the lives of so many people, including our students. It would have been nice to be able to have girls meet physically in one space. However, it couldn't happen and, how, and it didn't stop us. The affinity group was a success. I have been inspired by this experience and I plan to implement affinity groups with other students in the current future. I would like to close this podcast by saying something that the girls would say at the end of every meeting. And if you are interested in the implementation of affinity groups, I recommend for you to have um, daily um, affirmations that you can share with your students. So here we go. Please join in with me. I am allowed to be myself and I am allowed to show people who I am. I am stepping into my power and I am stepping into my truth. I am beautiful, I am bold, and I am one of a kind. So thank you for having this great conversation with me. I hope you learn a lot about black girls and the importance of their voice being amplified, the importance of their voices being heard. Until next time, take care of yourself, be safe, and peace out.